Before you decide to take the job, my agent Kathy Robbins said, there's something you need to know about gourmet. She paused, as if trying to figure out how to put it. And then, the magazine's publisher is in the family. The family? Size family. Gina Sanders is married to Stephen Newhouse, his nephew. I didn't like the sound of that. What you're saying is that if we ever had a fight, I'd lose. What I'm saying is, go meet her before you make a final decision. Because if you don't get along, the job will be a nightmare. Gina Sanders was only in her 30s, but on the phone, she sounded oddly formal. When I asked how I'd know her, she replied, I'm five foot three, and I'll be wearing business attire. Who uses the word attire in ordinary conversation? But the description proved useful. There was only one person in the coffee shop not dressed in casual clothing. And as I headed for her table, I noted that the small woman in the conservative gray suit had shiny brown hair, bright eyes, and a pointed chin. I almost laughed. This was not the frightening businesswoman I'd envisioned. Gina Sanders made me think of a character in a children's book, a sleek little fox dressed in grown-up clothing. She eyed me with some alarm. I was rather proud of my outfit. I'd recently discovered a vintage coat from the 50s in a thrift shop, and I loved the way it hugged me tightly to the waist before erupting into a swirl of velvet skirt. Gina, however, was clearly not impressed. It did not help that the melting snow on this blustery January morning had leaked through my old leather boots, which were emitting embarrassing little squeaks with each step. She looked down as I sloshed toward her, then quickly adjusted her face and held out her hand, fingers pointed downward. Thank you for coming down to the village to meet me. I wanted to be sure we wouldn't be seen. Did everyone at Condé Nast think they were being stalked by paparazzi? She'd obviously expected someone older, more fashionable, and decidedly more formidable. As we made idle small talk, I could sense her questioning size judgment. She remained cool, even distant, until I mentioned that I'd grown up a few blocks away. At that, her entire demeanor changed. My house is just around the corner, she cried. Which one? When I was small, Dad walked me up 10th Street every morning on the way to PS41. He'd peer into the apartment windows we passed, inventing stories about the people who lived inside. He decided the man who sat in the bow window, the one who waved whenever we walked by, was a retired sea captain. He made up fantastic adventures for the girl on the fourth floor who looked like Audrey Hepburn. But he didn't have to dream up stories about the family in what was now Gina's townhouse. They were old friends. Ruth Wittenberg was an amazing woman, I told Gina. She fought for suffrage and civil rights, and she was a famous gardener. Your house was always the main feature on village garden tours, but I was much more interested in the dining room. Phil collected cookbooks, and the floor-to-ceiling bookshelves were filled with them. Are they still there? Gina made an odd little face, as if she'd swallowed something bitter. Nothing's still there. My mother-in-law had Mario Buada decorate the house as a wedding present. She leaned in meaningfully, as if I'd empathize. I didn't know anything about the decorator, or any decorator for that matter. But back at the office, I looked him up. Buada favored heavy drapes, patterned fabrics, and overstuffed furniture. Conventional comfort at its most luxurious. I thought it was a good sign that Gina didn't like his style. It seemed meant for older people. She seemed nice enough, I reported to Kathy, but she struck me as very ordinary. Could you work with her? I don't see why not, although I couldn't help adding. I didn't get the impression she thought much of me. She must have liked you better than you think. Kathy's voice was brisk, because Condé Nast just called to make an offer. Do you want to hear the terms? Two minutes later, I hung up in a daze. All around me, the newsroom buzzed, familiar, cheerfully distracting. My fingers shook as I dialed to cancel the reservation at Les Celebrités, the fancy new restaurant I was supposed to be reviewing. Michael and I could not possibly discuss this in the middle of a packed room where we could be overheard. Then, still dizzy, 
I turned off my computer and picked up my purse. I considered dinner as I rode the subway. I'd stop at Citarella to buy some shrimp, make that Marcella Hazan pasta Nick and Michael liked so much. I'd get a bottle of wine, a bunch of flowers, bake brownies.